Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at selection and in particular how selection is implemented using the if statement. So the if statement is the most commonly used approach to implement selection and selection is exactly what it sounds like. It's where we give the user a choice, where we build into the program the ability to pick one option or the other. So let's say we have a, an ATM machine or a pass machine uh, and we know it gives us cash and we know it gives us a receipt. Sometimes we're asked, do we wish to print the receipt, yes or no? So we get a choice there. And sometimes the, the pass machines don't say that anymore. What they say now is, in the interest of preserving the environment, would you like to print a receipt or continue? But as we can see, that's the same option, one way or the other. Do you want to print a receipt, yes or no? Do you want to print a receipt or continue? Continue is the same as no, we continue on. So anytime we want to give the user a choice to allow them to say, do you want to do this or this? we need a, a, a command to allow us to do that and the command is the if statement we're going to look at and overall we call that giving the user selection. So if we remember uh, in a previous episode we're looking at making a cup of tea, let's say we wanted to ask do we, do we want to add sugar to that cup of tea? So we'd call that selection as well. We give the user the option whether they want sugar or not. We could state it as follows. So if we look at the statement here, it's if uh, sugar is required. Now, if sugar is required as a condition, it's either true or false. Is sugar required? Yes or no. If it's required, then we add sugar. Otherwise or else, we don't add sugar. And then we finish off that statement in pseudocode with the word indif. It's all one word ending with the semicolon. So we'll notice how we've indented or pushed out the then and else part of the, 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 the pseudocode there. So if starts at the start of the line, then is pushed in by a tab, else is pushed in by a tab, and then indif closes off by starting at the start of the line again. So we'll read it again, if sugar is required, then add sugar, else don't add sugar, indif. And we could put that in our pseudocode, as we see it right there. So we can just throw it in as if sugar required, then add it, otherwise don't. So the if statement can be placed anywhere in your program. We've looked at sequence already, so that's selection in the middle of the program. And the co computer program will execute each statement at a time. When it gets to the if statement, it'll either run the then part or the else part, but not both. We're either going to add sugar or we're not. So it'll only do then or else. The general format of that is if some condition, in this case sugar required, then do something else, do something else. It can be a single action in the then part or a sequence of statements and equally with the else part. But as long as we remember to open with a condition, uh, have the then and else and then close with indif, that's our good pseudocode if statement implemented. If we want to check two numbers and check which one was biggest, we could say if A is bigger than B, and print out the bigger of the two, print A, else print B. So if A is 5 and B is 3, A is bigger than B, so then we'll print out 5. On the other hand, if A is 4 and B is 26, then A is not bigger than B, so then we'll print out 26. If both numbers are equal, if A is 5 and B is 5, then A is not bigger than B, so we'll print out B, which is 5. It's going to print out 5 anyway. The bigger of 5 and 5 is 5. The smaller of 5 and 5 is 5. So this program is a simple program that will print out the bigger of two numbers simply by checking the condition which number is bigger than the other. Um, let's say we want to read in a number and check if the number is odd or even. We know how to distinguish between odd and even numbers. An even number is one that divides evenly into two and gives no remainder. An odd number, if we divide it by two, it gives a remainder. So if the number is six, six divided by two gives three and no remainder. If the number is seven, seven divided by two goes three times plus remainder one. So if we wanted to look at pseudocode for that, it's Again, we start off by declaring the program name, and the program name in this case we're checking if it's odd and even, so let's call it is odd or even in that camel case format, then a, a colon. Next line, read in. So we're going to ask the user to type in a value a, and then if a divided by two gives a remainder, then, the num then print the number is odd, else print the number is even, end if end. So if we read in the number six, it's going to print 
it's even, if we read in the number seven, it's going to print it's odd. We'll never get a case where the words it's odd and it's even are printed together because the if statement is like a divergence in the road, a, a split in the path. We either take the then path or the else path. We don't take both paths. So two roads diverge with yellow, we would. And uh, you pick whichever one you want. If we want to, um, we can skip the else part of the statement as well. So in, the, in our original example, if sugar is required, then add sugar, else don't add sugar. The bit there that says else don't add sugar is fairly redundant really, there's no need to say it. What we could rephrase that is, is just, if sugar is required, then add it. And that's it. And then there's no need to say else don't add it, because if, if we don't do the then part, we won't add the sugar at all. So if we look at that structure again, if some condition occurs, then do something, otherwise no change occurs. If we wanted to look at that in, uh, as a flowchart or as a diagram, we'd start off with the word start at the start of the program. We'd read in a value A. We've got a choice then, this is for the um, odd or even. The, the choice we represent as a diamond shaped and the diamond says it's the condition. Does the division by two give a remainder or not? And the diamond is a perfect shape because the previous command comes in from the top and then the two points of the diamond on the side are the yes or no. If it's yes, then print it's odd. If it's no, then print it's even. No matter what happens though, we bring it, the program continues on from either the left branch or the right branch. It continues on to a line that brings us down to the word end at the end of the program. So this is how we describe the program as a flowchart. Flowcharting is very popular for long, more complex programs as a pseudocode, whereas for these simple examples, I think just looking at the picture, we can see what it's about. It's telling us, do an activity, read in the value. So any activities are parallelograms. Get to a choice, the diamond, and you just go left or right. Um, let's say we want to pick the biggest of two numbers again. So let's look at the code, the pseudocode now. We've expressed the if statement, so let's throw that pseudocode in. And we, we start off with program again, bigger of two numbers. So print bigger of two numbers is the name of the program. Uh, we read in A and B, and then if A is bigger than B, we print A, as we print B, end if and end. So, so we've seen the if statement part of this already, and now we can see it wrapped around in, in a full pseudocode program. Uh, although pseudocode doesn't compile, it's not like the computer will recognize this. I, I want, the, uh, it's very important for me that you guys get into the practice of writing pseudocode like this. Um, the, the practice of having program in capital letters, the name of the code and always ending with the word end full stop. Different programming languages will have different ways of implementing this. Some don't use the words end if or end, they use a, a curly brace or a bracket or they just use the word end generically. Some programming languages don't even use the word end at all, they, they just can tell based on indentation when a statement ends, how far a, a statement is pushed out. But I'd like you to get used to this because with a lot of programming people fall down by just not being accurate in their syntax so they forget to add in a space at the end or semicolon at the end or put in a return and then the program gives her an error and then they can't find out why it is and almost nine times out of ten it's because there's something wrong with the formatting of the instructions. So it's very important to get used to being accurate and precise in the way you represent this code and pseudocode is a good practice at that. So if we want to represent that as a flowchart, we'd start, we'd read in A and B and we're going to have a single command that reads in both of them and then it's the same thing, we've got a choice. Either A is bigger than B or B is bigger than A. If A is bigger than B, we print A. If B is bigger than A, we print B or B is bigger or equal to A, we print B and then we end again. And if we look at the flowchart for this one compared to the is odd or even, although the words in the boxes are different, the boxes themselves, the shape is all, all exactly the same. So if we look at a flowchart or picture of, of code represented like this, if we see this kind of structure, we know exactly what the program is about. It's got an if statement in it, it's giving you a choice, go left or right, 
and then we do one or the other and then we end. So just by looking at the shape of the flowchart, we can see there are certain programs that look the same. Okay, so let's say we want to express the following algorithm, which is to print out the biggest three numbers. So we want to read in, we read in three numbers A, B, and C, and then we check if A is bigger than B. And if A is bigger than B, then we just check if C is bigger than A. If C is bigger than A and B, then C is the biggest. If A is bigger than B and C, then A is the biggest. If, on the other hand, B is bigger than A, then we compare B to C. If B is bigger than C and A, then B is the biggest. If C is bigger than B and A, then C is the biggest. So how would we express that as pseudocode? We do it as follows. We'd say program, again, biggest of three. We read in A, we read in B, and then we read in C. Then if A is bigger than B, then we check if A is bigger than C. And if A is bigger than B and C, then we print A. Else, we know that A is bigger than B, and we know that C is bigger than A, so we print C in diff. And that, that should end the program there if A is bigger than C, if A is bigger than B. If B is bigger than A, though, we go to the else, first else part, and then that else is else if B is bigger than C. B is already the biggest between A and B, so if B is bigger than C as well, then B is the biggest of them all, so we print B. Otherwise, if C is bigger than B, and we know B is bigger than A, then C is the biggest, so we print C. End of. So notice in our code how we have an, what we call embedded if statements. So the if is sitting inside another if, and there's an if sitting inside both the then and the else, but we close the ifs with end ifs, so we show the scope of, of the if statement. And then we close the big overall end if, and then we close the program with an end full stop. And as pseudocode, that looks like start. Uh, read in A, B, and C. Check if A is bigger than B. If A is bigger than B, then check A bigger than C. If not, check B bigger than C. Um, if in either case, if C is bigger than A and B, or C is bigger than B and A, then print out C. Otherwise, we'll print out A if A is bigger than C and B, or B if B is bigger than A and C. We print out that statement and then we bring it all together with a close to an end. And that's it for this um, session, so we'll see you on the next episode.